Fast Trackers and welcome to the final lesson of this uh, Life in the UK test training lessons which is the last chapter of the Life in the UK test handbook which is chapter uh, 5 and lesson 9, uh, the government, your role and you. <laughs> you, your government and your role. It's basically government and politics and um, a lot of the stuff that we're going to learn today is going to be really uh, interesting. A lot of these things you probably already know. But again, let's get straight into it. Close the door, get a cup of tea, get your family in the room, put it on the big screen, have all your family around, uh, uh, sit together. It's your choice, whatever you like, but make sure you enjoy yourself and give yourselves a pat on the back. You've got into the last episode and you've done an amazing job. Well done, Fast Trackers. Let's get straight into it. Okay, just like before, we're going to go through the questions and uh, I'm not going to help. I'm just going to watch uh, and you guys can tell me if we're doing it right or wrong. Um, uh, the UK government, the law and your role, lesson number nine. Question number one. In the 1830s and 1840s, a group called the Chartist campaigned for reform. Which change did they not campaign for? A. Elections every year. B. For every woman to have the vote. C, for all regions to be equal in the electoral system, or D, secret ballots. So in the 1830s and 1840s, a group called the Chartists campaigned for reform. Which change did they not campaign for? Elections every year, for every woman to have the vote, for all regions to be equal in the electoral system, or for secret ballots. The correct answer is for every woman to have the vote. Question number two, when did women get the vote? 1918, 1928, 1969 or 1998? I think you guys know this by now, but again, my mouth is sealed. I'm going to wait till the very end before I start giving you the secrets and the tips and everything. Uh, but for now, it's all you. Imagine this is your real exam. When did women get the vote? 1918, 1928, 1969 or 1998? The correct answer is 1928. Well done to those of you who knew that. Question number three, why is the British constitution described as unwritten? Never had a revolution which led permanently to a totally new system of government. They are not used to writing things down. The revolution, uh, everything was destroyed. It is written down in a single document. So why is the British constitution described as unwritten? Never had a revolution which led to permanently to a totally new system of government. They are not used to writing things down. The revolution, everything was destroyed and it is written down in a single document. The correct answer is A. They never had a revolution which led permanently to a new system of government. Question number four. The UK has which type of monarchy? King or queen? Uh, this is uh, king or queen. Monarchy means king or queen. Constitutional monarchy, absolute monarchy, democratic monarchy or free monarchy. The correct answer is, well, I'll read it one more time. The UK has which type of monarchy? King or queen, that's what monarchy means. A, constitutional monarchy, B, absolute monarchy, C, democratic monarchy, or uh, D, free monarchy. The correct answer is A, constitutional monarchy. Well done. What is the national anthem of the United Kingdom? God save the queen, God save the crown, God save us all from fish and chips or God save the Queen. Uh, the national anthem of the United Kingdom is God save the people, God save the crown, God save us all from fish and chips or God save the Queen. The correct answer is God save the Queen. Well done. What, M what does MP stand for? Member of Parliament, Member of Prime Minister, Member of Peacemaker. What does MP stand for? Member of Parliament, Member of Prime Minister or Member of Peacemaker? The correct answer is Member of Parliament. Well done. <clears throat> Name the two houses in the UK government. House of Commons, House of Lemons, House of Fraser, House of Lords. Uh, name the two houses in the UK government, House of Commons, House of Lemons, House of Fraser, or House of Lords. The correct answer is House of Commons and the House of Lords. Don't worry if you don't understand this, we will be covering why it is the House of Commons and House of Lords a little bit later on today. You're going to see it's going to make a huge difference. Okay, question number eight. What is the system of government uh, where two parties rule at the same time? 
a coalition government, single-powered government, three-party government, or four-party system. What is a system of government where two parties rule at the same time? Coalition government, single-powered government, three-party government, or four-party government? Um, the correct answer is coalition government. So it's coalition together. Well done. What is the voting system that the UK uses at the moment? First past the post, proportional representation, uh, rolling of the R's, disproportional representation, or complete anarchy. What is the voting system that the UK uses at the moment? First past the post, proportional representation, disproportional representation, or complete anarchy. The correct answer is first past the post. Well done. Is the following statement true or false? Since 1999, hereditary peers have lost the automatic right to attend the House of Lords. Um, is the following statement true or false? Since 1999, hereditary peers have lost the automatic right to attend the House of Lords. Is this true or false? It is true. Who is the speaker? Question number 11. The person who chairs the debates in the House of Commons, the person who speaks the most and is given an award, the Prime Minister's favourite politician. So question number 11. Who is the speaker? The person who chairs the debates in the House of Commons, the person who speaks the most and is given an award, the Prime Minister's favourite politician. So who is the speaker? Um, correct answer is the person who chairs the debates in the House of Commons. So the speaker is the person who chairs the debates. Wonderful question. Number 12. When are UK elections held every year? Uh, how, uh, held every one year, two years, uh, three years, five years or ten years? So when are UK elections held every three years, four, uh, one year, three years, five years or ten years? Correct answer is every five years. Well done. Five years. Question number 13. Who are shadow ministers? Uh, ministers selected by the opposition party to check the current minister's decisions. The minister who sat at the back of the room. The ministers who never turn up to meetings. Yeah, because they're always the shadows of ministers. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I can't say anything. I have to be very uh, quiet at this point and let you guys do it. It's like the real exam. It's like the examiner walks behind you, makes a joke. Ha ha ha. You're never going to get that right. And then walks away. Um, so... Who are shadow ministers? Ministers selected by the opposition party to check the current minister's decisions. The ministers who sat at the back of the room. The ministers who never turn up to meetings. The correct answer is ministers selected by the opposition party to check the current minister's decisions. What are the Hansard proceedings? Full official reports on the debates of parliament. Uh, the reports of war. The reports of the prime minister's personal life. Um, hmm. The Hansard proceedings are full official reports on the debates of Parliament, the reports of war or the reports of the Prime Minister's personal life. The correct answer is full official reports on the debates of Parliament. That's right. Is the following statement true or false? Members of the armed forces, civil servants and people found guilty of certain criminal offences are allowed to run for Parliament. True or false? Uh, is this statement true or false? Members of the armed forces, civil servants and people found guilty of certain criminal offences are allowed to run for parliament. That is false. Criminal law relates to carrying a weapon, speaking to others, helping others or betting. So criminal law relates to carrying a weapon, speaking to others, helping others or betting. The correct answer is carrying a weapon because it's a criminal offence. Question 17. Civil law is used to settle disputes between individuals or groups, consumer rights, um, employment law, debt or all of the above. Civil law is used to settle disputes between individuals or groups, consumer rights, employment law, debt or all of the above. The correct answer is all of the above. Civil Oh, sorry, I can't give away any hints yet. I have to wait until the end. So if you want me to explain everything properly in terms of questions, wait until the end, right until the end, I'll do it all again. Question 18. If you think someone is trying to persuade you to join an extremist or terrorist cause, what should you do? You should notify your local police force. You should notify your local fire station. You should notify your local hospital. You should notify your local army. So if you think someone is trying to persuade you to join 
an extremist or terrorist cause, what should you do? You should notify your local police force, notify your local fire station, you should notify your local hospital, you should notify your local army. The correct answer is you should notify your local police force. That's right. Is the following statement true or false? The money raised from the national insurance is used to pay for state benefits and services such as the state run retirement pension and the NHS. True or false? Is the following statement true or false? The money raised from national insurance is used to pay for state benefits and services such as the state retirement pension and the NHS. The answer is true. Yes. And I, and I, um, national insurance is used to pay for these things. But I will not explain any more. We'll wait, I'll explain at the end. I have to stop myself. I keep trying to help you, but it's the real exam. Question 20, how old do you have to be before you can drive a car? 16 years old, 18 years old, 24 years old, or 34 years old? How old do you have to be to, before you can drive a car? 16 years old, 18 years old, 24 years old, or 34 years old? The correct answer is 18 years old, well done. How old do you have to be before you can drive a moped? 16, 18, 19, or 25? How old do you have to be before you can drive a moped? I'm going to give you a hint. A moped is like a scooter because I remember a lot of my students in class didn't know what a moped is, yet they've all driven scooters. So a moped is a scooter. Uh, so how old do you have to be before you can drive a moped or a scooter? 16 years old. How old do you have to be before you can become school governor? 16, 18, 20 or 30. So how old do you have to be before you become a school governor? And I'll give you another hint. A school governor is the head teachers, head teachers, head teachers, so the head, head, head teachers, they're like the person that manages all the schools. <gasps> I'm giving you too many hints. The correct answer is 18 before you can become a school governor. Uh, so what is jury service? Anyone who is on the electoral register and is aged 18 to 70 can be asked to serve on a jury. It's local community service picking up rubbish. The correct answer is anyone who is on the electoral register and is aged 18 to 70 can be asked to serve on a jury. Uh, what does MEP stand for? A member of European Parliament, member of European Pi Key Minister, member of European Peacemaker. The correct answer is member of European Parliament. Well done. What does PM stand for? Prime Minister, Optimus Prime, Peacemaker. What, is M what does PM stand for? Prime Minister, Optimus Prime or Peacemaker? The correct answer is Prime Minister. Well done. Good job. All right, guys. So let's jump into uh, uh, government and politics and let's talk about the development of the British democracy. So in Britain, there was never a revolution. So um, a, lot of, a, a lot of the forms in the 1830s and the 1840s we're going to come to the revolution part in a second. Um, this is when the Chartists uh, campaigned for reform. Now, the Chartists wanted uh, equality and they wanted six things for every man to have the vote, not just the people in the cities. Because before the 1830s and the 1840s, the only people that could have the vote was uh, people who owned property, which pushed out the people who were poor and in the countryside, and their vote did not matter as much as the vote of the people in the city. So they wanted elections every year. That never happened. They wanted all regions to be uh, equal in the electoral system. That did happen. They wanted secret ballots. That did happen. For any man to be able to stand as an MP, that did happen. And for MPs to be paid so that they can take time away from their work, go to uh, Parliament and, you know, uh, do their work. Parliament uh, before the 1830s and 1840s was just a big boys club <clears throat> and it was a networking club. So at the time the Charters campaign for reform, a lot of these things were seen as a failure because they never happened. Actually, they were slowly integrated over time. Uh, you know, secret ballots was done over time, regions were equalised over time, every man got the vote, every man could be an MP and every person could be uh, paid. However, they did not campaign for women's rights to vote. That's why we're using the term every man. They did not believe women should be able to vote. Uh, that came with Emmeline Pankhurst and the suffragettes, which we'll see a little later. So, 1918 women got the vote at 30. Ah, this is this is what I wanted to show everyone. Okay, this is really important because... Um, there is three, three, three stages in the women that got vote over the, over the course of like 50 years. 1918 women got the vote 
women who were over 30 could vote in 1918. This was exactly after World War I, 1914 to 1918. 1928, men and women over 21 could vote. So this was um, before World War II, after World War I, and this is the important one. So this one, guys, the one I'm highlighting for you right now, if you only remember one of these dates, this is the most important date, 1928 for women's voting over 21. 1969, the year of love. Apparently, it was a very peaceful year. Men and women over the age of 18 could vote in 1969. So 1918, women over 30 could vote. 1928, men and women over 21 could vote. 1969, men and women over 18 could vote. So the voting age was dropped down to 18. The British Constitution is not written down. So um, there's no single document for the British Constitution because um, there was no revolution. So unlike countries like America, where you have the Constitution written down, you know, the right to bear arms, the right for freedom, civil liberties, and, and all sorts is written down. That's that's very much written. And France had its own revolution, um, uh, like... Um, a very, very uh, violent revolution. Uh, of, of course, all revolutions are pretty violent, but this one was particularly violent for a long time. Um, that one was a uh, French Revolution, and they wrote down their their um, um, they codified their um, constitution. But England has never had a, a revolution like that. That's why it's, mm, it takes some different documents and it kind of puts it all together. Um, so that's that's the idea. In the exam, they'll say, why is the um, England's constitution unwritten? It's unwritten because there was never a revolution that allowed it to be unwritten, uh, unlike America and France. That's the question for your test. The Queen! Oh my God, we have seen your face so many times in this uh, training. Oh my God, Queenie. That smile. Ah, oh, it's a face that could launch a thousand ships. The monarch. The UK has a constitutional monarchy. What is a constitutional monarchy? It's where the Queen does not make the decisions. She does not make decisions on uh, uh, taxes. She does not make the decision on, on, on what happens in Parliament. She only advises. So her and the Prime Minister, they sit down and they advise and they talk together. So the monarch has regular meetings with the Prime Minister. There was times where she would have meetings with Margaret Thatcher and Margaret Thatcher and the Queen never got on. So what the Queen would do was she would open up all the windows in um, in uh, her house and then Margaret Thatcher would come in and sit down and it would be freezing and, and you know the Queen sitting there with all of her fur on and she'd be like, yes, yes, it's pretty okay, I, I don't mind it at all. So she's, she's wrapped up but, the, but Margaret Thatcher is like freezing. And then she talks and then she gets up and leaves and, and uh, the Queen laughs at that sort of thing. Uh, so the Queen uh, Elizabeth II has reigned since her father's death in 1952. You can take this number here and calculate how long she's been on the throne. If you just remember that she's been on the throne since 1952, she had a Diamond Jubilee in 2012. Diamond Jubilee means she's been on the throne for 60 years. It's now, uh, or it doesn't even matter what year it is now because the Life in the UK handbook hasn't changed since 2013. It's, it's been the same since 2013, so whatever, I suppose. She opens up the new parliamentary session every year and the Queen makes a speech and summarises the government's policies for the year ahead. Uh, basically, the Queen's speech goes, And now we will talk about the future, of which austerity is the main aim. And pretty much it goes on for like, like 50 minutes and... Prince Philip is sitting there looking like Skeletor and um, the Queen herself is just rolling on and she has to invite all of the people out of the House of Commons because she's not allowed to go into the House of Commons because as you remember from the last video, um, King Charles II, uh, you know, uh, Charles I, King Charles II, King Charles I, King Charles I who got <coughs> executed, he tried to arrest people in the House of Commons so she's never allowed to go into the House of Commons from that point on so she invites everyone out gives them a telling they go off and i guarantee they forget everything she said i hundred percent could put money on it i don't bet but i would bet that they would forget if you ask them afterwards what did the queen say to you during the day oh 
something about austerity, you know. So there you go. Right, monarch, which also means king and queen. The national anthem, God save our gracious queen, God save our gracious queen, God save the queen. The greatest national anthem in the world. Next to uh, Caribbean national anthem, which is a lot more fun. You can dance to it. You can't dance to this one. Oh, and you will be expected to. <laughs> you guys will. When you pass your life in the UK test and you get your citizenship, you will be expected to sing that song at the national citizenship ceremony in front of a picture of the Queen. Oh, you're going to love it. Uh, so you got to put your hand over your heart and then sing the national anthem. They'll say to you, you don't have to, but they're still going to play the music and they're still going to sing it and they're still going to, you know, do it. And then they're going to look at you out of the corner of the eye and they'll be like, he's not singing the national anthem. Here's a tip. Look, you don't need to sing it. You just need to hum it. There you go. That's pretty much the same thing. New citizens swear loyalty to the Queen as part of the citizenship ceremony, which is what you will you will do after you get your uh, citizenship. Uh, you send off your application to the Home Office. Um, they'll approve it. Uh, you'll get like a, a a letter back saying congratulations. You're now a citizen. Please call this number. You will now book a um, uh, you will now book your um, your ceremony, and they'll um, you can refuse, and they'll just post this certificate to your house, or you go and you'll go to the council building, your local council building, and you'll go inside. There's loads of chairs. You'll sit down. They'll talk to you about the importance of being British. You'll go up, you'll pick up your, you know, so it's very, it's actually a big thing, you know, becoming British. And, you know, you pick up the the, the, the certificate, you take a picture, you go with your family. It's, it's quite a big thing. Uh, what they'll ask you to do is oath of allegiance and affirmation of allegiance. I have no idea what those things are because they're not on the exam. So we're going to leave it at that. Next slide. Oh, brilliant. The system of government. Right. Okay. The UK is divided into parliamentary constituencies. Voters in each constituency elect their member of parliament, their MP in a general election. So if you look at all these colours here, uh, I'll just go through the colours. Uh, yellow is Liberal Democrats and each one of these little places is a constituency or a little region. Uh, red is Labour. Uh, blue is Conservative. This looks like it's the 2011 um election green is green party or smp the northern ireland do you notice how republic of ireland is not involved it's just northern ireland and england britain and then london's got its own thing going on it's got loads of smaller constituencies within london majority of them are labor and a couple of lib dems in there fierce battles fierce battles and elections the british constitution the system of government this is the government here all the elected mps form the house of commons so when you get when you become when you get elected by your by your local peers and your groups um, and your constituency you then get a place in the house of commons and the leading party sits on the left the ones that are in power and the opposition party is on the right so there's two terms you need to remember for your exam who is the party in power? The one who won the election. Who is the opposition party? The ones that have the most uh, second place. This is second place. This is first place. And they keep arguing at each other. And I swear to God, if you go on YouTube and you look at these people, and, I, and I'm, I'm dead serious, if you go on YouTube and you type in House of Common Debates, it's embarrassing. They just um, uh, throw insults at each other throw jibes, uh, they, they, they constantly are making jokes. It is the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen uh, because these people are being paid to go to parliament and in between all the important work that important pol uh, members of parliament are doing, trying to help their constituency, you've got a lot of people laughing and joking about certain issues and, and problems. Type into YouTube, member of parliament debates, I guarantee you, you'll either laugh so hard or you'll be embarrassed so hard, either one of the two. All right, next slide. So you can also find your local MP or MEP. And this is very important because if, let's say, God forbid, anything happens to your application where your application is not going through with the Home Office, you've got a problem, or it's been more than six months your application has gone off and you need help, you can just type into uh, your local council. I, I did the Nottingham one because that's where I live. And you can type in your local MP. Your local MP will write a letter 
to uh, the government and they'll take it seriously because there's a protocol in which the um, Home Office must reply back to um, local MPs letters within seven days, three days, there's a protocol. So if you're struggling, you should just put some pressure on the Home Office, get them to write a letter. That's a very good thing to do. So you can search for it on your local government website. Oh dear God, coalition. Do you guys see how old this is? This book is like from 2013. It's still referencing um, David Cameron and Nick Clegg. That was from years ago. My God. Most MPs belong to a political party. Yes, that's a given. And the party that the majority of MPs forms a uh, government. If one party does not get majority, two parties can join together to form a coalition. Now, again, whatever is in red, that will come in your test. So these two party members have formed a coalition. And you can see by the expression on Nick Clegg's face, he knows he's made a large mistake. And you can see the expression on David Cameron's face um, that he's uh, he's readying the next... Um, the next uh, uh, change in draft in government. So uh, he did very well. He didn't do very well. In it. But again, that's politics. That's None of that is inside the, uh, the Life in the UK handbook. It doesn't go that deep into it. But uh, we will talk about the House of Lords. Now, there are two. So we've talked about the House of Commons. We are the common people, me and yourself, and we're the normal common people. We have uh, voting in our local areas and we pick one person to represent us. They go to the House of Commons. Now, the House of Lords, if you get chosen to go to the House of Lords, then you become Lord um, Michael or Lord Elizabeth or sorry, Baroness Elizabeth. Sorry, beg your pardon. <laughs> Baroness? Lady? Lord? What are they? I don't know what they call the. Is it lady? Lady and lords? Is that what they do? Yeah, it must be. They're, 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 they're basically peers. Peers is lady and lords, I think. Now, what used to happen was when your father got lordship and then, he, or your mother got a baroness or your mother got a ladyship, uh, when that person, uh, uh, you know, passes away, um, you know. Um, I'm sorry if, if you know uh, uh, if anyone's mother or father has passed away. This is sort of a expression that um, if they passed away, they would pass their title to you. So imagine your mother and father would pass the title of lord or lady uh, to yourself. You would become the next peer, and that's called hereditary. Uh, hereditary means from mother and father and parent to child. Now you would inherit the title and then you'd go into a parliament. But Tony Blair stopped that by saying um, those people have no right to be there because they haven't earned it. And so life peers had completely stopped. Uh, so there were senior judges, bishops of the Church of England, uh, people who were the Queen's friends, they would go. So bishops, what is a bishop? A bishop is a priest, but a top, top, top priest. What is a senior judge? He's a judge, but he's a senior, senior judge. What is a doctor, senior doctor, you know? People who spent many, many years in political service, many years in service of the of king and country, queen and country, and they've been recognized saying, hey, you know what? You did a great job. We're going to make you a lord. So we're going to put you on a lordship list. And every year we're going to, you know, there's a couple of lords that get made out of that. Since 1958, the prime minister has had the power to nominate peers just in their lifetime. Um, life peers. Uh, and then I think... Tony Blair got rid of the, the other one. Uh, since 1999, hereditary peers have lost the automatic right to attend the House of Lords. They now elect a few of their number to represent them in the House of Lords. The House of Commons has power to overrule the House of Lords. Now, this is in your test. It's highlighted in red. Um, the House of Commons has the power to overrule the House of Lords, but these powers are not uh, used often, it seems the House of Lords and the House of Commons have some sort of mutual respect where they don't argue with each other. House of Lords just kind of debates uh, and House of Commons, you know, does all the paperwork. Member of the House of Commons is an MP, Member of Parliament, uh, including the Prime Minister, the Member of the Cabinet and other uh, me uh, Members of Parliament. Um, their responsibilities is to represent everyone in the constituency. That makes sense. You know, you're, you're elected. You represent your people. Help to create laws. That also makes sense. Scrutinize and uh, the comment, um, the comments on what the government is doing. So scrutinize what the government's doing and debate important national issues. So 
yeah, pretty much what you would expect a member of parliament to do. Um, now the speaker, this always comes in your test, so get a pen and paper, definitely write this down. Uh, the speaker um, chairs the debate in the House of Commons and is the chief officer of the House of Commons. Uh, as you can see, um, this is the speaker. I don't know from when this is. I, I, I don't think I was watching parliament discussions when this person was the speaker. That's the ceremonial gavel. That's the lady that carries the gavel. I'm sure she performs other duties as well, um, uh, but she's currently carrying the gavel. Um, this is the chief officer of the House of Commons, is neutral and does not represent a political party, even though he or she is an MP, represents a constituency and deals with constituents' problems like any other MP. Is chosen by other MPs in a secret ballot and keeps uh, order during the debates to make sure rules are followed. Also represents Parliament on ceremonial occasions. Basically, his job is to separate the two parties out and say things like, uh, please don't fight, please don't fight, please don't fight, make sure that civil, he, he has to chaperone the two sides so that they don't, um, so they actually get things done, because if they didn't, they would just carry on um, fighting with each other, and it just just get into a mess, which pretty much does anyway. Right, okay, uh, British Constitution, MPs are elected at a general election, which is held every five years, that's on your test. By election, that's on your test as well. If an MP dies or resigns, there will be a fresh election in his or her constituency. First past the post, MPs are elected through a system uh, called first past the post. In each constituency, the candidate who gets the most votes are elected. So what is first past the post? For any of you guys that uh, do horse racing, first past the post is where the first horse that passes the post wins everything. So in other um in other governments you'll like the italian government for example they have proportional representation proportional representation means that if you get 49 percent of votes i get 51 percent of votes uh we both get kind of an equal share of votes according to how many votes we get so we both share power but in the uk parliament the first person to get past the post gets a majority lead and pretty much uh, wins everything, they, they get everything. This is to maintain a um, decisive lead so that government can move in one direction or another rather than gridlocked in 50-50 state. Um, and it's just to make sure that one party gets it and the other party gets it. There's been a lot of complaints from parties such as Liberal Democrats that this system does not benefit them. Uh, because all of their power is um, spread out, um, but really and truly, um, nobody really wants to change this uh, because it's either Labour or Conservative. Labour or Conservative—that's the only two power, the only two um, parties that get into power usually. European parliamentary elections are also held every five years. Uh, elected members are core members of the European Parliament (MEPs). And they use a system of proportional representation where seats are allocated to each party in proportion to total number. So we said that actually. So again, the only things you need to focus on is first past the post, by-election. Now, a by-election, the best way to remember this is if an MP dies or resigns, you say goodbye, bye, bye, and you do an election in between the term. So you say bye-bye, by-election, and you make another election. It's called a by-election, it's held in between. Um, that's about it. Okay, so elections, contacting elected members, that's fine, you can contact them on the website. I think this came up in one student's exam and they said, Where, what do I do uh, if I need to contact the Member of Parliament? You can go on the website. Here is the website and you just look for them on the gov.uk website. Okay, so in your book, 100, page 126, you can check that you understand all the information there. That's where you can go back and check it out. Um, in the course, uh, we also reference the handbook sometimes, so you can look inside the course that you have. Um, right, geez, well, okay, we are going... Wow, he's not been Prime Minister for a while. Um, the Prime Minister is the leader of the political party in power. He points the members of the Cabinet. David Cameron has control of many important um, uh, appointments. Oh, okay, so... I'd rather have David Cameron in this presentation than Boris Johnson, but there we go. 
the Prime Minister is the leader of the political party in power. He appoints the members of the cabinet and he lives at 10 Downing Street. That's all you need to know. Leader of the political party lives at 10 Downing Street. Um, Prime Minister usually resigns if his party loses a general election. That's kind of weirdly what happened to him. George Osborne, uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, responsible for the economy. Uh, funny, kind of weird, funny guy because uh, he put a lot of... Um, uh, he In one interview, he tells you about how to do tax evasion uh, in an interview. And I, I think there was, it was early, early before he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. So he can tell you a lot, a lot about those things. Uh, Theresa May, oh my God, she is the woman who is responsible for the life in the UK test. So, um, she was the Home Secretary responsible for crime, policing and immigration. She was the one who made the life in the UK test. So, if you want to blame anyone for the life in the UK test, Theresa May. There you go, she later became Prime Minister. Uh, Philip Hammond, Foreign Secretary responsible for managing relationships with foreign countries. Uh, Ed Miliband, leader of the opposition party, um, and uh, he, uh, the senior uh, opposition MPs, uh, became shadow ministers. They formed the shadow cabinet, uh, who is to challenge the government and put forward alternative policies. So that's his job, was to challenge, um, challenge the opposition, and he was the Labour Party. Uh, his, his job is to just keep challenging the Prime Minister. Um, civil service. Now, if you know anyone that works uh, in in the government, uh, works, let's say, the council, the government. Um, uh, yeah, the council, I think, is the best example. Anyone that works in the council is a civil servant. Now, they support the government in developing and implementing its policies, but they're not allowed to run for elections because there is a conflict of interest. Um, so... People can join the civil service through an application process like any other jobs, but the application process is a bit more stringent. It's like joining MI5, but you may end up being a rubbish man, which is cool because you get paid really well for doing that. But I think in MI5, it's a lot more stressful. Yeah. Local government, towns, cities and rural areas in the UK are governed by democratically elected councils, often called local authorities. Um... None of this is going to be any test, guys, so I'm not going to really cover it. I'll read it, but I can tell you now, if it's not in red, don't memorize it. Um, the mayor is the ceremonial leader of the council. That's kind of important. Um, the Lord Mayor and the Nottingham uh, uh, Nottingham councillor. This is a while ago. The Nottingham councillor is Ian Malcolm, and she is the sheriff of Nottingham. She's a lovely lady. I've met her once. She's lovely. Um, this is our local tram. I believe, and they're doing a great job. Yeah, the tram was the tram system in Nottingham is a lovely, lovely tram system. It goes on time, and it's very clean. Uh, media and the government Hansard proceedings. Now Hansard is imagine when uh, people in Parliament are discussing and debating. Uh, the Hansard is a, is a bunch of people writing down everything that they're talking about. They put it into a um, a digital document, and they will uh, allow it to be. Uh, available to everyone in the UK so everyone can come in and find out what people are talking about. So the Hansard proceedings in Parliament are broadcast on television, published an official report called the Hansard. By law, radio and television coverage of political parties must be balanced. So equal time can be given to rival viewpoints. This is also in your test as well. Uh, equal, equal coverage. Uh, who can vote? Um, uh, the present voting age of 18 was set in 1969. Um, adult citizens of the UK, citizens of the Commonwealth and the Irish Republic who are resident in the UK can vote. Uh, adult citizens of other EU st um, states and other residents in the UK can vote in all elections. So, uh, But you can't vote in the general election. So this is actually covering you guys. So if you're a foreign national in the UK and you're wondering what can I vote in, you can vote in everything except the general elections for the Prime Minister. So you can vote in everything except for who the Prime Minister is. Uh, the Electoral Register, to be able to vote in a parliamentary, uh, local or European election, you must have your name on the Electoral Register. Now, the Electoral Register is a good way of getting your credit score up. It's uh, what you need to... Uh, it's, it's basically a registration of who you are, where you live, so you can vote. That's it. 
the electoral register is up updated every year in September or October. An electoral registration form is sent to every household and this has to be completed in return with the names of everyone who lives in the house. Northern Ireland has a different system operates. It's called individual registration. Northern Ireland, NI is individual registration and uh, England, Wales and Scotland is electoral register. So you get a poll card when you're supposed to go and um, vote. Now I'm sure you guys actually have received a poll card and you've seen it. It has like a, it's like a card and on it it has a design for where you're going to go uh, to your local polling station and then you go and you vote and you come back and you feel fantastic. That's great about the democracy. Um, and that's what a poll card is so that will come up in your test. Um, the UK and international institutions. So we talked about the Commonwealth before. Uh, very interesting that um, um, there, you, there's like a member state now of the British Empire. It's a very old common state. One of the one of the ones that I know of uh, is Fiji. Fiji is a Commonwealth country. I think Canada is a Commonwealth country. There are many, many, many. Uh, some that are, were never part, never colonized by the United Kingdom are also part of the Commonwealth because they have access to uh, people and uh, uh, resources, which uh, is good. It's good for networking, I think. Uh, there are currently 54 member states. I do think there's more now. This has not been updated. Um, this is from the book and the book has not been updated. Membership is voluntary. You don't have to. And the Council of Europe has 47 members. Um, Again, all of these things you don't need to know for your exam because it's not in red. Um, what you do need to know, I'll get to it in a second, the United Nations and the European Union. The UN uh, was set up to, uh, it's like a UN Security Council. Britain is one of the uh, big players in the UN because it was set up after the war. There are five members in there. Um, the, the, the UN has uh, five key members, apparently, permanent members of the Security Council. The European Union uh, was set up by six Western countries. Uh, 1973, you know, they joined. Um, I'm trying to get to what, what really is in the test. The police protect life, property. That's very important. Uh, prevent and detect crime. Organized um, as headed by Chief Constable, independent of the government. So with the police, the only thing that comes up in the test is um, that uh, the police, uh, if you want to make a complaint about the police, you can do so through the police ombudsman and you uh, you can make a complaint to anyone in the police. And one of the uh, one of the most important things in the United Kingdom is that the the UK has a really strong governance, really strong law system, which is why uh, people feel very, very safe. It's always had strong policing. Um, which is very important for the safety of the people of the United Kingdom. Uh, police community support officer is called a PCSO. I don't think any of this is in the test, at least not anymore. Sometimes they used to ask this five, six, seven years ago, but no one's, no, none of my students have come back and said that this was on the exam. But a PCO is a, is a support officer. They're very, very important. You have support officers and police officers. Um, anyone can make a complaint about the police. Um, criminal law is, oh, this is in the test. Okay, so criminal law is when you carry a weapon, you have drugs or deal drugs, you are uh, doing racial crimes, so you're calling someone because they're white or black or Asian or uh, Chinese or, 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 or something of the such. You're selling tobacco, which uh, you're not supposed to be selling. Smoking in public places, so within four walls or within public places that you're not allowed to. Buying alcohol. Uh, underaged and drinking in public in alcohol-free zones. This is all criminal law. Civil law is between one person and another and you've sometimes heard the phrase keep it civil, meaning civil law. Civil law is used to dis uh, settle disputes between individuals or groups. A housing law, consumer rights, employment law, debt, that's one person to another. Landlord and tenant, for example, a landlord and a tenant having problems. Terrorism and extremism. If you think someone's trying to persuade you to join an extremist or terrorist court, you should notify your local police. So, hey, 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 if someone comes up to you and says, hey, you like Hamas? And you say, I love hummus. Let's go. 
we're going to go get some hummus. And he takes you to a terrorist rally. And you say, there's no hummus around here. And they say, yeah, this is Hamas. You go and tell the police officer, say, this guy was lying. He told me I would get some hummus. There's no hummus here. This is Hamas. Yeah, you better, if anyone tries to say, we want to join a terrorist organization, you tell the police straight away. It's false advertising. I'm telling you about hummus. The role of the courts. Also, oh, again, so just to be clear, terrorism police that's the only two connections you can make in the test terrorist and police okay the small claims procedure an informal way of helping people to settle minor disputes without spending a lot of time and money using a lawyer is used for claims for less than five thousand pounds in england and wales and three thousand pounds in scotland and northern ireland uh this is important because it does come in the exam um, small claims procedure in England and Wales is £5,000 and Scotland uh, and Northern Ireland is £3,000. What is small claims procedure? Um, it's when, like, let's say you have a, a painter that's come to your house and he's painted the house and you don't pay that painter and you were meant to pay him, let's say, uh, £4,000 to paint the whole house and you didn't pay that person, then he can take you to small claims procedure court because if he takes you to the main court, it's going to cost the painter a lot of money and there's no point. Then, you know, why would he pay all that money? Small claims procedure means that you just sit down in a room with someone and you work it all out. For minor cases, magistrates court in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, justice of the peace court in Scotland. They are members of the local community in England, Wales and Scotland. They usually work unpaid and do not need legal qualifications. This is justice of the peace court in Scotland. Magistrates court M for magistrate, M for minor. Minor cases, minor and magistrate, you can use that together. Justice of the peace court in Scotland. And in Northern Ireland, cases are heard by a district judge or deputy judge who is legally qualified and paid. Um, you know when you get to the questions part everything that i've explained will be a lot easier when you're doing questions because it kind of cuts out all of the waffles so if you, right now you're going how am i going to remember all this i want to let you know it's not important you don't have to remember all this the way that you pass the life in the uk test is you do the questions and answers and practice questions and answers answers questions questions answers all my students um uh, only practice questions and answers, but specifically the same ones as the real exam. This here is, is kind of like coming from the book, and that's why we don't allow students to read the book entirely. We try and explain what's important, what's not important. Otherwise, they could spend months trying to figure out the book, go to the exam, and nothing comes up. So it's really important to have a teacher kind of just telling you, this comes up, this doesn't come up. This comes up, this doesn't come up. Make sure you practice this, make sure you don't. It saves you like... Uh, months of, of, of you know second guessing why second guess when there's someone um, uh, teachers and uh, online people that already know what to do um, so for serious offenses um, you will go to Crown Court now the best way to remember this is serious offenses like a murder or on your head that's Crown non-serious cases are a minor M for minor and that is for magistrates court sheriff court in Scotland uh, more serious is in high court again high crown minor magistrate or sheriff uh, court the jury is made up of members chosen there are 12 members in England Wales and Northern Ireland and 15 in Scotland now the best way to remember this is there are 12 eggs that's right you heard me there are 12 eggs in a carton of eggs and there are 12 members of jury in England and Wales. So if you want to make an omelette, yeah, you want to make an omelette, there are six eggs in the front, six eggs in the back. And that's how many jury members there are in England and Wales. If you want to make an omelette for Scotland, it's a slightly bigger country, therefore you need a bigger omelette. So you need 15 eggs. So 12 eggs for an omelette in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, and 15 eggs for an omelette in Scotland. That would be wonderful if any student who passed their exam, exam sent us an omelette in the post. We love omelettes. Youth court is for children. 
uh, Wales and Northern Ireland, anyone from age 10 to 17. The more serious cases, again, go to Crown Court. Youth courts, uh, you cannot use pictures of the children who have been accused in youth court because it will psychologically um, affect them for the rest of their life. And uh, anyone between 10 and 17, you cannot use their photographs or pictures. In Scotland, it's called a system called Children's Hearing System. Although I haven't had this question in the exam, I haven't seen anyone come back to us and say this was in the exam. Um, Northern Ireland has a system of youth conferencing uh, to consider how a child should be dealt with when they have committed an offence. The judiciary, uh, or fancy name for judges, are those who are together called judiciary, judiciary, are responsible for interpreting the law and ensuring that trials are conducted fairly. The government cannot interfere with this. Civil courts deal with a wide range of civil disputes. In Scotland, most of the disputes are dealt with by sheriff courts. Most serious cases are dealt with by high court, again on your head, and crown court on your head. They're dealt with the court session in Edinburgh. Um, again, don't worry about all this information. It's a bit it's a bit information overload, but that's what the government and politics is about at the end of the at the end of the book. It's just loads and loads of information stuck in at the end. Uh, legal advice. Now this comes in the test. This is important. Solicitors are paid for their time. So however much time a solicitor spends with you, you get paid according to the time. Now that you can definitely write down because that's in your test. Um, it's important to find out which aspects of law a solicitor specializes in and to check that they have the right experience to help you with your case. Because sometimes solicitors don't do everything. They may advertise everything, but you want to find a specialist solicitor for each case because the, the law is super complex. Uh, for example, um, you if you want, like for example, in your case, um, this is a bit of advice for you. Uh, if you are getting a solicitor to do your application, don't go to a solicitor who does immigration as maybe the fourth or fifth thing down the line. They're just going to hand it to someone in the team who does solicitor work, uh, immigration work, maybe like one or two days a week. Um, you want to go to a specialist immigration firm that handles immigration cases like six, seven days a week, every day, and you want to give them the case. The reason being is they know all the ins and outs of home office and normally solicitors uh, who handle large money cases um, such as um, criminal law, for example, or maybe, maybe like... Um, intellectual property law or like um, dispute you know that some of the more profitable uh, there's there's divorce and, and uh, family law family law sorry not divorce law uh, family law um, uh, just just more profitable things they may not see this as, as as important and they may not read all the rules but if you go to a local immigration solicitor who does all of the immigration work uh, all day, every day, and they only handle immigration work, they'll probably know all the ins and outs that might work out better for you. Um, just be aware of that. And if you're struggling with that, you know, just let us know. We're happy to recommend someone to you. Um, we know quite a few immigration solicitors that we could recommend. Um, and we recommend a specialist immigration solicitor. Um, some of the principles, including the European Convention of Human Rights, are rights to life, prohibition of torture, prohibition of slavery and forced labor, rights to liberty and security, uh, right to a fair trial, freedom of thought, conscious and religious, uh, conscience and religion, freedom of expression, speech. None of this comes in your test, except for in the first chapter, which is what are the two things that you, you can... Um, what are the two things that you should do as a British citizen is look after your friends, family and your community and uh, respect the rights of others. That's what this is referring to. But, you know, what else is going to come up in the test? National insurance number. OK, now this does come in the test. OK, national insurance number. The way you apply for a national insurance number is you need a valid ID and the proof of being able to work in the United Kingdom. Uh, wages uh, from paid employment profits from self-employment, uh, taxable benefits, pensions, national insurance, the money raised uh, from it is used to pay for state benefits and services such as state retirement pensions and the NHS. 
uh, driving. So you want to apply for a driving license? No problem at all. We also provide driving license training as well. So if you want to look at the website uh, that we have, we also have driving theory training. So you can look at that too. Uh, so in the UK, you must be 17 years old to drive a car or motorcycle. You must have a driving license to drive on public roads. Uh, you must uh, be at least 16 years old to drive a moped. We know this. Drivers can use their driving license until they are 70 years old. And after that, the license is valid for three years at a time. If your driving license is from a country in EU, Iceland, Liechtenstein or Norway, you can drive in the UK for as long as you like, as long as your driving license is valid. Now, uh, what's really interesting is this next part here. Now, this, this is going to apply to a lot of you guys. If your driving license is from any other country, you may use the license for up to 12 months to continue driving. After that, you must get a full license. Now, this is interesting. If you have, you can change your license into a UK driving license within 12 months. Uh, after 12 months, you've got to do a theory test and sit in a practical test. That's not hard. I mean, you can go on our website and we've got a course for driving theory tests and it's really good. I've written all the material for that as well. And that one's a really good one. Um, uh, and, and you can pass within a month for that one. Is it an offence not to have an MOT certificate if your vehicle is more than three years old? Um, right. So if you do not have an MOT certificate after, let's say you get a brand new car, factory fresh cars uh factory fresh geez uh, a car that comes out of the factory you peeling the plastic off the of the car that type of car um, those cars have an mot for three years built in and then one year afterwards so a car that is older than three years old has one year on the mot every single year but within three years you don't have to mot the car your role in the community. Let's talk about school governors. So, school governors are the head teachers, head teachers, head teachers. So, they manage all the schools. And no, they do not mark homework. And no, they do not uh, uh, sit in detention. Their job is to set the strategic direction of the school, ensure accountability for teachers, and make sure uh, they monitor and evaluate school performance by providing the correct resources the schools need. And if any school goes down in its academic performance, it is the school governor who gets it in the neck. <laughs> No, they do not execute the school governor. Uh, another thing is that the school governor has to be eight, it can be 18 years old and that's when they can begin their, their rise for school governorship. Jury service. Anyone out there who's served jury service? I have. It's really interesting, like super interesting. Uh, because uh, you go in and you sit down and everyone else is from the countryside and they're inside the uh, jury service and they are, um, well, they all deliberate on cases. It's really interesting stuff. Um, a lot of people want to get out of jury service. I've seen everyone make excuses to get out of jury service. Um, but jury service is when your name is put on the electoral register. When it's on the electoral register, you could be called at any time to go to jury service. Um, it's 18 to 17 year old, 17 year olds, 18 to 70 year olds and can be asked to be on the the jury you can um refuse jury service like twice and then you legally have to go unless you have a real reason why you can't um there's blood organ and organ donation helping your local services supporting political parties oh my god guys do you know what this slide means it means you finished oh my god that last one is really tough and you guys have done it wow Let's go through the questions and then we'll have a chat about everything at the end. I'm so proud of you guys. Wow. You've done all nine lessons. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, in the 1830s and 1840s, a group called the Charters campaigned for reform. Which change did they not campaign for? Elections every year, for every woman to have the vote, for all regions to be equal in the electoral system or for secret ballots? The correct answer is the Charters did not campaign for every woman to have the vote. That is the truth, uh, because uh, only the suffragettes campaigned for women's votes, and that was in 1928. When did women get the vote? 1918, 1928, 1969, 1998. I've given it away. It is 1928. However, however, 
1918 it was women over 30 that got the vote 1928 was women over 21 that got the vote 1969 is women over 30 that got the vote so perhaps the way we've written this question might not be the right way for the real exam but this one is your best bet to memorize when you go to the real exam because this is what gets asked all the time they seem to have removed the 1918 caveat they seem to have removed the 1969 caveat and they're only using the 1928 uh, number uh, because all of our students come back saying yeah it was 1928 that was the only option we got that was it and so we've also um, similarly used that option why is the British Constitution described as unwritten? You remember this, guys. We did this before. It, uh, Britain has never had a revolution which led permanently to a totally new system of government. They are not used to writing things down. The revolution, uh, everything was destroyed. It is written down in a single document. Um, the British, why is the British Constitution described as unwritten? Uh, because they've never had a revolution. The constitution is unwritten because there was no revolution. Well done, guys. The UK has which type of monarchy? King or queen? Constitutional monarchy? Absolute monarchy? Demo democratic monarchy? Free monarchy? The correct answer is constitutional monarchy. So constitution means um, they can ask and they can support but they cannot get involved the the parliament is in charge not the king or queen the parliament remember guys we went through all these lessons about the bill of rights reducing the power of the kings we also went through the magna carta reducing the power of the kings this is the monarchy reducing the power of the kings the monarchy has this much power now good or bad mostly good uh, because the parliament who we have elected should be ruling the country what is the national anthem of the united kingdom god save our gracious sorry god save the people god save the crown god save us all from fish and chips god save the queen <laughs> from fish lips no i'm joking <laughs> what is the national anthem of the uk god save the people god save the crown god save us all from fish and chips or god save the queen god save the queen make her victorious god save the queen what does MP stand for? Member of Parliament, Member of Prime Minister, uh, Member of Peacemaker. The correct answer is Member of Parliament. Name the two houses in the UK government. House of Commons, House of Lemons, House of Fraser, or House of Lords, House of Commons and House of Lords. Remember guys, the House of Commons, are the, we are the common people, we vote for people to go. House of Lords are the Queen's friends, bishops doctors senior judges okay please remember this this is going to come in your test it's really important what is a system of government that were uh, that that uh, where two parties rule at the same time uh, what is a system of government where two parties rule at the same time coalition government single powered government three party government or four party system the correct answer is coalition government co two parties coexisting together coalition government what is the voting system in the uk uh, which is uh, which is used at the moment first past the post proportional representation disproportional representation or complete anarchy so what is the voting system that the uk uses at the moment first past the post is the correct answer so this is a voting system where the first horse that gets past the post gets the photo finish and the podium medal Nay, say the Liberal Democrats. Nay, we would like proportional representation. No, unfortunately, we can't do that because the Conservative government don't want that. The Labour government don't want that. Therefore, they will never vote for that. Is the following statement true or false? Since 1999, hereditary peers have lost their automatic right to attend the House of Lords. Since 1999, hereditary peers have lost their automatic right to attend the House of Lords. That is correct true hereditary peers have lost hereditary means from father or mother to child well done who is the speaker the person who chairs the debates in the house of commons the person who speaks the most and is given an award the prime minister's favorite politician the correct answer is the person who chairs the debates the speaker chairs debates you don't have to read the question or the answer what you can do is just pick the key words and still get it the keywords never change. It's always the same keywords. And we hope that we've kind of helped you in, um, in highlighting what these keywords are. 
So who is the speaker? The speaker chairs the debates. When are UK elections held? Every one year, three years, five years or ten years? It's every five years. Five years for UK elections. Who are shadow ministers? Ministers selected by the opposition party to check the current minister's decisions. The minister who sat at the back of the room. The ministers who never turn up to meetings. They are the ministers selected for the opposition party. Imagine they're like the shadow of the ministers and they're just telling them you need to do this and you need to do this. So they are the shadow ministers. What are the Hansard proceedings? Full official reports on the debates of Parliament, the reports of war, the reports of the Prime Minister's personal life. They are full official reports on the debates of Parliament, Hansard reports. Is the following statement true or false? So sorry, I went a bit quick there. These, this is written down, it's available online, it's available for the public. Hansard is a report that is available for the public. Is the following statement true or false? Members of, members of the armed forces and civil servants and people found guilty of certain criminal offences are allowed to run for parliament. False. If you have a criminal record, unfortunately, you cannot run for parliament. Uh, I say unfortunately, it might be for the best interest of, of the people. Um, the majority of them don't have a criminal record, but, you know. A criminal law relates to carrying a weapon, speaking to others, helping others or betting. It is carrying a weapon. Civil law is used to dis settle disputes between individuals or groups. Consumer rights, employment law, debt, all of the above. This is all civil. Civil is from one person to another, such as your landlord and tenant dispute. Consumer rights, employment law or debt. If you think someone is trying to persuade you to join an extremist or terrorist cause, what should you do? You should notify the local police, you should notify the local fire station, you should local notify your local hospital or your local army base. Now, someone says to you, let's get some hummus, Hamas, and you turn out to go and there's no Hamas, you call your police officer, you say, hey, these guys promised me a bit of hummus or no Hamas, and they've got a terrorist organization going here, so therefore... I'm calling the police on you, so you should notify the police. Well done. Is the following statement true or false? The money raised from national insurance is used to pay for state benefits and services such as the state retirement pension and the NHS. Uh, it's true, that is true. They do pay for state retirement pensions and the NHS using the national insurance. How old do you have to be before you can drive a car? 16, 18, 24, 34. The correct answer is 18. How old do you have to be before you can drive a moped or a scooter? 16, 18, 19 or 25? 16. How old do you have to be before you can become a school governor? 16, 18, 20 or 30? 18. What is jury service? Anyone who is on the electoral register and is age 18, 17 can be asked to serve on a jury. It's local community service picking up rubbish. Uh, the correct answer is anyone on the electoral register and is age 18 70 can be asked to serve on a jury. That's correct. Um, what does MP, MEP stand for? Member of European Parliament, Member of uh, European Pi Key Minister, Member of European Peacemaker. The correct answer is Member of European Parliament. What does PM stand for? Prime Minister, Optimus Prime, Peacemaker. The correct answer is Prime Minister. Well done, guys. I'm very, very proud of all of you. Well done. Okay, guys. Wow. Um, normally, I do, I do normally make a lot of jokes in this last one, government and politics. And the reason I make a lot of jokes in it is um, there's, it's just such a tough one um, when it comes to, like, I have no other way of teaching this without making many, many, many jokes. Uh, because every one of my students falls asleep when I teach government and politics at the last lesson. But I just want to congratulate you. I want to give you guys a massive round of applause. You have completed all of the lessons of the life in the UK test uh, from one to nine. That covers everything in the book. It means you don't have to read the book. A teacher has sat with you and explained everything in the book. So you now know everything. The students that, that I usually see passing the fastest just do questions and answers, questions and answers, questions and answers. Um, because the Life in the UK book has a lot of things in it that you don't need to read and it's not important. If I was to give you three top tips for passing the exam, these would be my three top tips. The first one 
is to uh, get, get the questions and answers that you know will come up in the exam. So finding the correct questions and answers is vital for you because it saves you time. You haven't got a lot of time to spend on this. You've got family, you've got um, children, you've got um, either that or you've got work, you've got things to do. You haven't got the time to dedicate to this. And also your home office application is, is needing to be done quite quickly. So finding the correct answers and questions is very important. The second thing is... Um, making space for yourself. So what does that mean? It means creating time to dedicate to this. Now, how much time can you dedicate? If you do it by yourself, you should be spending like two hours on it or like, you know, as much time as you can. If you get the help of a teacher, you only should be spending half an hour because the teacher has got you on the right path. So every day you can spend half an hour because the teacher's already created the full course for you. You're just following the course and it makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, teacher like ourselves, like this whole program that you've just been on, this is how you don't have to work hard. You just come home from work, put the video on, put your earpiece in, clean the kitchen, listen at the same time. And it's a teacher that's telling you what it is. If it's easier for you to be with a teacher um, live and talking to the teacher and say, teacher, I didn't understand this, then yeah, go and get that support. Um, the, the third thing is, 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 a lot, is getting support. Either get support from a family member, a friend or a teacher online that can do this all quickly for you. And students that get support from a teacher are 86% more likely to pass quicker they spend a lot less time, they don't second guess, and they, they, they get a service which does all the hard work for them. And if you haven't got a lot of time, if you failed once or twice before, don't keep doing it yourself. Go and find a teacher and let them help you and support you. Those are my three top tips. And this is coming from a teacher who's been teaching for over 10 years life in the UK test. So I've seen students come to me a month before deadline. I've seen students who've come to me a week before deadline. We've had students that have come to us that have sent off the application and now they've just realized that they need the certificate so they've come to us and we got the certificates. Um, we've seen students that have just come into the country and their families say, you know what, we need to get this thing done now and we're going to do the training now. And they've only been in the country a week or a month, but they still passed. Um, why? Because it's all about you. You are an individual. There is nobody like you. Every student is different. And as you can imagine by reading, you know, the comments below and looking at these videos, every student has a different approach to learning the life in the UK test. But there is one tip I would give you that beats all the tips. Whatever you do, don't do it alone, okay? You have recently come to the United Kingdom. This is not your country yet in the sense of becoming British. So you don't know the things that, for example, I would know because I've lived here my whole life. Everything that I've just gone through was taught to me when I was a child in school. And so how are you expected to learn all these things? In fact is... You probably know more about the life in the UK test now after watching this series than any British person does. If you were watching this series with another British person with you, then like you probably they probably turn to you and say, even I don't know that. They always do. They always turn to you and go, I didn't know that. So how do you how how are we expecting you to know it? Get some help. It's really important and you can do it very quickly. Down below, there's a telephone number. You can WhatsApp myself personally. Uh, there's a free assessment. You can book an appointment to talk to a teacher. You can speak to our telephone people. Uh, you can go on our website and enroll on a course, look at more details. If you want to practice all of these questions, visit the website. I've set up a free questions and answers page for you to continue working on it. Um, but don't suffer alone. And remember, guys, be thankful, have fun, have a life because everything stops when the life in the UK test comes along get a, you know have a life and get get up and get active and don't put too much pressure on yourself lord knows you put too much pressure on yourself 
And if you want to become a British citizen, the best place to go is fast track training because teachers um, like us, we, we really enjoy helping students like you and we want to make it easy for you. So that's, just, uh, that's, the, uh, that's enough for this time. I know the last bit I've talked quite a lot, but the reason being is I've spent a lot of time with you. You know, this video series is, is nine episodes long. It's, it's however many minutes. And now this is it. This is the end. And I'm really grateful that I got to spend this much time with you. I'm really grateful that you watched everything. And if you do want to talk, if you want to communicate and reach out, come and talk to us. We're not just teachers and, you know, just message us and we'll talk to you and we'll help you and we'll support you. Um, so, again, my name is Rahul Ghazni. I'm the director of Fast Track Training. And I'm going to say well done. I salute you. I'm grateful that you've uh, attended all of these lessons and uh, you deserve a medal. Have a great day and we'll see you uh, when you become British. Thank you and take care.